anyhow, uh, one of the things we've been talking about today, uh, Reserve Bank decision to lower rates by 0.25 of a percent. Uh, here's what you have to say. Give our banks a break. They were the only banks in the world that survived the global crisis. And if they hadn't, there would have been many people having to foreclose on their homes and wouldn't be having to worry about interest rates because they wouldn't have a home. And instead of knocking the banks, thank your lucky stars that we have got them. I love a feisty woman. <laughs> I got, love a feisty woman. She has woman. some very valid points. Well, the most valid of them all, of course, is that the one thing a country wants is a very healthy banking sector. And this country mm. has an extraordinarily healthy healthy banking sector. All right, time to talk to our politicians now. Ed Husick from Labor. Ed, good morning, morning. to you. And Steve Chobo, Liberal MP, joins us too. Morning to you, Steve. Morning, Paul. Let's talk about the RBA decision firstly. Um, Ed, uh, in your electorate, obviously, it will be welcomed when finally the banks make a different decision to the one they've made so far in lower rates. That's, well, I think uh, in uh, my part of the world, manufacturing's a big deal. We're yep. probably in the top ten of uh, seats with a you know, strong manufacturing presence, nearly 10,000 jobs you know, because of it, and they're facing pressure due to the Aussie dollar. And uh, having interest rate cuts means a big deal to them and to the small businesses out, out in my area. And there, are 10, concerns with, there are concerns with um, employment rates and things like that, so obviously this will all work in favour of, of those things. But again, and I'm always looking for ways to get uh, more jobs and uh, support industry uh, in our part of Western Sydney. So having the, the interest rate cut is uh, a great thing and it's basically brought on because we've been able to, uh, in effect, uh, bring in, or well, on the way to bring in the surplus in tough Well, it's just tricky, so. though, isn't it, Ed? Because I was listening to Wayne Swan yesterday, who's crowing about this as being a great thing, but, of course, arguably one of the reasons the rates have dropped is because the economy's going to hell in a handcart. Uh, it's not going to hell in a handcart. It's going very well, and c especially compared to But if it were going other, very well, the Reserve it, Bank wouldn't have lowered the rates. But for going to other... Well, I still think they can lower rates more. I mean, my view is it's, uh, it's an issue of you're not really going to be able to provide fiscal stimulus and see... Uh, economic growth in the way that uh, being able to have monetary policy ease, the benefit that that will do for business. And we've got an economy that you know has got a lot to be proud about compared to a lot of other parts of the world where unemployment well, yeah, is We can, but there are specific reasons for that. I, I agree with that, but there are specific reasons. Um, Steve, uh, what, what do you make of the fact that the Reserve Bank have acted? Do you see the glass half full or half empty? Uh, well, look, Paul, of course, we always welcome an interest rate cut. It's better that it's going down than up. But make no mistake, I mean, this is a consequence of sluggish economic growth, uh, a consequence of Australia's future not looking that bright. And you know, don't forget, Paul, it was only a couple of years ago that when the official cash rate was at 3%, only 25 basis points below where it's at now, uh, Wayne Swan was saying they're at emergency levels. They yeah. were his words, emergency yes, yes. levels. So now he's trying to make out that he's some genius who's, you know, brought about the world's greatest economy. Uh, and people like Ed go out there and, of course, defend him on the front line. Yeah. Um, and you're quite good at it, Ed, to be perfectly honest. And, and also, Wayne, <laughs> Wayne you, one of your bosses, is, is very good at clutching victory from the jaws of defeat, which is, as I see, what he's doing at the moment. Well, I think we've got a lot to be... When you look at what's happening, if we had uh, the unemployment rate that Spain has, you know, 20% compared to now... I don't think you can say because it's a totally... We have, we're in a why? totally different environment. No, no, I'll tell you why. Mining boom. And the one thing, there's been a lot of debate recently, is the mining boom over or not? The Reserve Bank clearly thinks the mining boom is over. No, they're saying that it'll peak next year and that uh, uh, certainly we've got a way to go in terms of the way that we perform. And what we're trying to do is bring in a much more modern economy and modernising that through, for example, uh, as much as the other side of politics bags it out, the productivity and economic benefit of the national broadband network, putting us in the box seat in terms of the type of things that will help businesses and households. We've got a lot of things that we should be proud about and we can't keep talking it down mm. because we we expect that uh, we'd rather, instead of looking at the silver lining, look at the rest of the... Planet. All right, a quick opportunity, Steve, yeah. for you to have a right of reply to that. Well, yeah, look, I mean, it's not a case of talking it down. It's a case of being critical uh, because this government's made some bad decisions, Paul. I mean, there's a couple of inescapable facts. First is this was a government that was left with $70 billion in assets. Mm. They've now turned that into $145 billion of debt. Yeah, which is What's quite remarkable. Paul, this is I mean, the credit where it's due. That's I, quite a remarkable turnaround. <laughs> in five years, I mean, to turn it around uh, to the extent of over $200 billion. But that's not even the most scary part. The scary part, Paul, is this. This Labor government, of course, has got now out to 
2020, 120 billion dollars of additional debt. Yep. So it's not going to go. It's not going to stop at 145. It's actually going to go up to 265 billion by 2020. I mean, the numbers are just crazy. I'm just airbrushing out the right. GFC. The, 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 no, look, the, the numbers. Convenient parts of history. Well, no, but the funny thing is, you see, because you use that as a convenient part of history, Labor used that as a convenient part by saying, "Look at what Greece. Convenient... They're not doing as well." Yeah, that's exactly right. Right. What was a convenient exactly right. part? That's what was a convenient on. part of the of the world economies basically seizing and us being able to see our way through it compared to others? Well, well, the I mean, convenient part is that you're able to use them as a, as a, as a, as a different version of what we're doing here. Well, so you compare Australia to a complete cock case like Greece and say, look how well we're doing. And the other side of politics wants to be able to say, well, you know, we've, had, uh, we've gone from a surplus to uh, having a deficit and talk about debt but not talk about okay. what was needed to actually save us from the, the GFC. Right. Uh, we need to move on You're to one other subject misleading. very quickly. Alan Jones. Steve, if in your wildest yeah. dreams Alan Jones should ever actually invite you on his show, would you go? <laughs> Look, you know, I, I would I would go on Alan Jones and uh, can I just say, that show of too. course, everyone, everyone, everyone is concerned about the comments that he made because they were inappropriate and wrong and he's acknowledged that. But where Labor's overreaching on this, Paul, I mean, you've got people like Catherine Davini, uh, you've got people like Mark Dreyfus, uh, you've got other people like uh, Mungo McCullum uh, who have said outrageous things in yes, the past yeah. about Conservatives. And of course, Labor doesn't say anything about that. But now all of a sudden they're up in arms about Alan Jones. I, I just think it's a double standard. Would you go on Alan Jones? Yeah, you look, my view is uh, you should um, have a diversity of views and yep. I'm more than happy to, to go on the program. Um, I don't uh, see that uh, me as a mere backbencher will ever get invited on Alan Jones's program. But, but if you were, you but, would go on? Yeah, because I, again, I, I don't no, mind good debate. For you. Of course but, you the, but the other point I'd make too is he, what he said was wrong. He took, a, he took him a while to get to a point where he was prepared to make it. Uh, but we're over that now, you see. But, but Wayne really? Swan, and I hate, to keep, I hate to keep talking about Wayne Swan, Anthony Albanese, Nicola Roxon, you know, they're trying yeah. to make, they're trying to make um, political mileage out of it, and I think well, that is almost a shameful. Side, a I think that's almost a shameful as remarks how, themselves. How strong those comments were. All right, uh, just very quickly, oh. would you like to just hold that yeah, up? Yeah, now the Steve's camera? not going to be happy just to show you're a real goes, person. Just, I'm a real person. <laughs> um, no, the Western <laughs> Sydney Wanderers. Yep. They have their first game this week, Steve. I know you won't necessarily be happy because of Gold Coast, but you've got a stack of other sporting teams. Western Sydney wants its own A-League team. Fantastic. It was three hundred dollars that membership, and you paid for it with your own money. That doesn't happen often. Good luck. Members of Parliament. Um, thank you very much, Ed Husick, Steve Chobo. Thank you for joining us. Always entertaining. We'll be crossing to a police media conference after the break about the missing plane in Northern Queensland.